to mark on the video prior to yesterday, so that would have been 615, um, and I didn't get any comments, so I thought it would be fine to use that same watermark again, but I'm assuming um, it was just that individual's patient's ear yesterday that illuminated that watermark. So, yeah, it was. So, if you look back to the video number 615, if you look carefully, it's the exact same watermark, but I didn't get one comment about it, which is really bizarre. So, um, I have adjusted the watermark today. Um, obviously, I need the, the reason for the watermark is it's been many years that. Uh, there's many people that have been stealing my videos and um, a lot of yourselves, thank, thank, and I should say thank you to you, you have contacted me to alert me of that, of that fact that people are stealing my videos and encouraged me to put a watermark on my videos. And to be honest, I've only just got around with it because I couldn't do it using my old software. With this new editing, uh, video editing software, I'm able to insert a watermark. So I have relocated the watermark. Um, give me some feedback, guys. It would be good. Um, I don't want to tell you where it is. Um, because then that will draw your attention to it. But the watermark obviously needs to be visible, but I don't want it to be intruding. Um, I can't put it on the black bits because some of these thieves, as I call them, or charlatans, are very good at cropping the video, just a circle. So it has to be within the main circle, the frame of the video itself. Anyway, so I had a patient um, with bilateral otitis externa. You can see it's very dry and flaky, um, the skin near the ear canal entrance, and the wax is quite dry and crumbly. I initially used a Zolna Suction Pro, but because the wax was quite dry, it just wasn't getting any suction grip, so I reverted to uh, a St. Bar um ear hook, and we're just slowly but surely extracting this out of the ear. There they are, there's so much in there. Yeah, there's quite a lot, there's still a lot more. And you may have noticed there, there's a bit of fogging. And fogging of the lens is quite common when um, someone's got otitis externa, because when someone's got otitis externa, there's a bit of an outer ear infection. And that increases the temperature. Um, and therefore, because the tip of the endoscope is at cooler temperature than the core temperature of the ear, you get condensation um, on the tip of the endoscope, the lens, just very momentarily, and then that condensation does go because the endoscope, the optical fiber um, that run through the endoscope dissipates the heat, so it does heat up the tip of the endoscope very quickly indeed. Uh, another thing that I, I mentioned in the video yesterday was that I'm trying to get to grips with the audio because I know a lot of you do like. Uh, having some audio, the background audio, and, and not just my voice, especially when there's suction. So there wasn't much suction in this in this particular video, but I think I've managed to uh, resolve that issue. So when I speak, um, any background audio should uh, go a bit automatically quieter, I hope. And then um, when I stop narrating, the background noise will go up. So I'm just using the suction probe just to um, extract some of this dry skin the patient's got around the ear canal wall. You can just see how dry it is that the eardrum itself is intact, it's very healthy. Uh, this patient's otitis externa is more lateral, it's near the entrance of the ear, as opposed to more medial towards the eardrum. The patient did advise that he was using a lot of water uh, when he's showering, bathing, and submerging his head under the water and using the shower head to almost rinse the ear out uh, like a jet wash, like a DIY self syringe or a I've advised against that. We want to avoid water in the ear, guys. Water can cause otitis externa, and, um, which can then lead to some serious ear infections. So we've recommended some ear calm, just some acetic acid over the counter and regular use of olive oil spray. Olive oil spray is slightly acidic and the ear is slightly acidic so it's, it's good at um, maintaining the natural pH of the ear and the acidity in the ear canal helps prevent bacterial growth and therefore inhibit um, ear infections. So I'm just using, we're on the right side now, so I'm just using an ear hook, uh, just got a bit blurry there, so as I put the wax out, it's smudged against the screen, but there we are, you can see the piece of wax that I removed, so the tympanic membrane in the eardrum, so that's the medical tan, it's all fully visible, there's just some dry wax, the little pimple there, top of screen, 
a little forum call. We don't pop these, um, these are fine. Um, it's quite common with people with otitis externa. There's no um, blood in there, it's not blood filled. And the patient has been rubbing his ear quite a lot, he was saying, because of the itchiness using his finger, so that, that could have aggravated that a little pimple. That will settle down. It's not painful for the patient. You'll see it in a moment. I was touching it with the suction probe. Again, I'm just trying to get some of this dry skin out. Uh, but as I say, we can see the whole eardrum, see symptoms alleviated. So again, giving some advice, ear calm, which is an acetic acid ear spray to help um, relieve his otitis externa and re-acidify the ear. When you've got otitis externa, the ear turns into uh, a more of an alkaline pH. So there we are. And uh, this is just a post-examination video of both ears, just to remind you. Um, I weighed all the wax, so it's 565 milligrams, and they're the contents on a piece of paper. So.